Update 1.99 has been pretty significant for naval forces, mostly due to the addition of the Italian Navy. That's not all that was added, however. Lots of changes to the balance and gameplay of naval forces have also come, for better or worse. I'm going to go through each notable change in the patch notes, explain it, and give my personal opinions on them. First though, I'd like to quickly mention two things. I'm planning to do a Q&A video when I hit 1000 subs. I'll have a pinned comment for questions in the comment section of this video, so leave anything you want to ask there. Just keep it reasonable, of course, nothing too personal or political. I've also set up a Patreon now, which I've linked in the description. Now, onto the patch notes. Many of the changes are minor adjustments to models or specific stats, so I'm going to be focusing on the more important ones. Japanese 25mm shells got changed. This should be a buff, as now the shells have more explosive filler and mass than they used to. This is a pretty good change, as previously the Japanese 25mm was one of the worst AA guns in the game. It still won't be great, but it should at least be better. The next change is that the firing range of AI weaponry got changed based on weapon caliber. Generally, these changes make them fire at longer ranges than they did previously. In particular, I think this will make 20mm cannons more effective. Previously they would only open fire by the time an enemy plane was dropping their ordnance, but now they should actually be quite useful. This is a good change in my opinion, as it makes lots of guns that were previously useless actually effective. I don't think it'll make planes perform that much worse other than when they're on a very close attack run, as the long range accuracy of AA weaponry still has some issues. The 40mm 70 caliber MEL-58 cannon also got its ammunition changed. Both the AP and HE shells were removed, being replaced by an HEFT shell along with an HEFT VT fuse shell. The ammunition change affects the Jaguar Class 140, Colon F220, and the new SATA P494. In my experience using these cannons on the SATA, they actually seem stronger than they were before this change, even against most destroyers. The radio fuse shell is also a nice touch. I'd say that this is a good change, as it makes the MEL-58 cannons a bit more versatile. Hullbreak got a pretty major change, now requiring a 100mm sheller up with sufficient blast force to destroy a ship. This should mainly affect the lower battle ratings, making smaller ships a bit harder to kill with the larger ones. This is a good change, previously most vessels were helpless against larger ones. They'll still struggle in direct combat, but it might take one or two more shots before being destroyed, giving them a fighting chance. The USS Helena got a buff to its crew, with 320 more being added on, bringing it to 1,188. It also got the minimum crew amount before being destroyed being raised, but it's still at 30% of the vessel's overall crew like every other ship in the game, so that's normal. This might sound minor, but keep it in mind as we go on to the next changes. It's a bit more important than it looks. These next three changes go along with each other, as they're all major changes to shells or damage models. Shell shrapnel has been fixed. While the patch notes don't specify what the fix is, it seems like an overall nerf to the damage from shell impacts, though it's hard to tell without any specific stats listed. High explosive shells also got fixed as to no longer instantly detonate ships, along with being made more realistic. Overall, high explosive ammo seems to deal less damage, but also light more fires. This goes along with another important change to ship construction. The thickness of most ship parts has been changed as to have explosions and fragments properly interact with them. So these three changes have a lot to go through, and not all of it is apparent from the text. Overall, this has provided an absolutely massive buff to American ships with anti-fragmentation armor. Ships with large anti-frag belts like the Fletcher, Sumner, and Brooklyn are now almost immune to high explosive damage. While these belts did provide a lot of resistance to explosives, it's providing absurd protection against HE charges regardless of their size and power. As an example, here's footage of a Graf Spee firing high explosive ammunition at a Fletcher in 1.97. And here is the same scenario in 1.99. This is easily the largest change of the patch. From 4.3 to 5.7, the American Navy is now more dominant than ever. Most ships from Tier 3 and up primarily use high explosive ammunition, and almost every large ship has its stock. Making one faction almost immune to it is, just possibly, unbalanced. Keep in mind, Japanese destroyers only have high explosive shells for their cannons, meaning you simply can't beat American vessels now without a lucky torpedo hit. This is, in my opinion, one of the worst changes to naval in some time. America is simply the best country now, with no contest. Even the Graf Spee is now incredibly weak in comparison to 5.7 American ships. 
Now, remember the increase to the Helena's crew count? This gives it almost the same crew as a Cleveland and the same weapons and armor layout as a Brooklyn, making it hands down the best ship in the entire game. I suppose the Prince Eugen sales must have slowed down, so Gaijin decided it was time to make another country overpowered to bring in the dough. I think they should have held off on adjusting the Helena's crew count. While it may be historically accurate, selling what is hands down the best ship in the game as a premium just isn't fair to the player base. At the very least, they could have added another Brooklyn in a late war configuration with the same AA weapons and crew in the tech tree, but that would hurt premium sales, so they didn't. The one other part of these changes that I dislike is the buff to fire ignition chance for high explosive shells. In cruiser battles, you get constantly spanned by AI destroyers and cruisers that only use HE shells, meaning that in the average match, the fire alarm will begin and never end, slowly driving the player insane. While I'm not against an HE buff to offset the nerfs to it, psychological warfare to this degree is not the answer. The lack of localized fires also means this deals far more damage than it realistically should. The changes to high explosive shells also make the stock grind much worse. Most ships have high explosive stock, meaning they stand no chance against later American vessels. The heightened ignition chance also means that random cross map shells are even more fatal than before to a ship without fire prevention systems. The stock grind was already bad enough, with Naval's grind being one of the most punishing in the entire game, so making it even harder is just a terrible decision. Some large caliber guns got an animation for ejecting spent shell casings. This is a small but nice addition, it just adds a little visual flair to a few guns. The rest of the changes in this section are pretty minor, mostly small adjustments to vehicle stats or animations. There are a few things I noticed that weren't listed in the patch notes, but it's worth mentioning them. The Italian SI-270 torpedo got a massive buff, going from 48km per hour on the dev server to 70km per hour on the live server. For some reason, the torpedo mode mod subtracts 19km per hour instead of 4 like the tooltip says, so I'm unsure what the final speed will be, though it will be better than 48km per hour, obviously. They've also had their price dropped by a factor of 10 since the update's launch, so you won't be spending a few thousand SL for a dozen torps anymore. This is a great change, as previously they were a bit too slow and expensive to really be useful. Hydrofoils had their steering change. While still fast and maneuverable, hydrofoils like the PG-02 and Sparvero will have a significantly harder time dodging incoming fire and making tight turns. There also seems to be a change to the detonation chances of ammunition, especially in destroyers, but without any hard numbers I can't be too sure. If so, I think it's a bad change, as destroyer combat just feels hyper-lethal, sucking the fun out of matches. I think it's important to note what things didn't get changed from the last patch, as 1.97 came with a lot of still uncorrected problems. The low crew repair mechanic still starts at over 5% crew. Destroyed shipwrecks still randomly spawn across the map. AI ships still spawn underwater. Most cruiser maps still only have one heavy fleet spawn. Most cruisers are still at 5.7, and the incoming shell sound hasn't been adjusted to be less ear destroying. Some of you may have noticed that the last one seems to be missing from lots of the footage I'm using, and you would be correct. Mr. Adats has made a sound mod that makes the sound almost inaudible, and ever since installing it, I've gone through a lot less headache medicine. I'll put a link to it in the description. If you're on PC, I'd highly recommend downloading this. It makes naval battles at high tiers a lot less painful to play. Hopefully Gaijin will drop the volume of this noise at some time in the future, but for now, I'm happy to just mod it out. That covers most of the major changes. Overall, I think naval is significantly worse from this patch. We've gone from a single ship dominating 5.7 to a single country dominating the 4.3 to 5.7 range even harder than the Graf Bay ever did. We didn't get any corrections to some of the major issues and bugs facing the mode, only Gaijin making America overpowered to sell more premiums. I can only hope that some of these issues are patched out, but the longer we go without any fixes, the less and less likely that seems to be. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more naval content.